Good afternoon, my students. I am still your economics teacher, Mr. Clinton Jamanzi from Federal Government College, Port Harcourt. Today, this lesson is for SS2 students, and the topic is labor market. Looking at the lesson objectives, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define labor markets. You should be able to explain demand for labor, and you should be able to explain the supply of labor. So you need to have that thing, this one, these things at the corner of your mind. All right. As we are proceeding, we are going to look at the labor market, the definition of labor market. Labor market is a market in which labor as a factor of production is bought and sold at an agreed price. That agreed price is the wage and the salary you are hearing. And conditions of service or employment. So, what we are talking about here, the labor market, is a market where labor as a factor of production. We know that labor is a factor of production. Where labor as a factor of production is bought and uh, sold. You have the knowledge of markets where the buyer and the seller come in contact. So, we are looking at it in the aspect of uh, not maybe rice or beans now for a factor of production, which is a uh, level. So in that market, an agreed price that will be paid to level, that's the reward for level, which is the wages, will be said on that market. And also the condition of service and employment will also be stated, or will also be agreed on. So that is what we meant by labor market. Let us look at labor force also. Labor force and labor market, they are not the same thing. So let us look at the labor force. Labor force refers to the employable population. So when we talk about the labor force, we are looking at the employable population. It is the total number of people in, in the country who are able, willing, allowed by law to work or who are within the age of 18 to 60 years that offer themselves for employment for the production of economic goods and service and the unemployed even when we are talking about the labor force those of them that are not employed, they are also included in the labor force. Those of them that are able and they don't want to work. Those of them that are able but they are not willing to work, they are included in the labor force. But also bear it in mind that when we are looking at, at the labor force, we are looking at, at those that are also allowed by the law to work. It's not everybody that are allowed by the law to work. For example, those that are in prison, they are not allowed to be employed. They are not in the labor market. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. They are able. They are willing. They may be qualified. Maybe depending on the criteria set for the for an employment employer for the for the entrepreneur to employ labor. They may, they may meet up the requirements, but they are not allowed by law to be employed. So, they are not among the labor force. Alright, and the children. You can see a child of 16 years, a child of 15 years. He may be willing, he's physically able to work. Maybe one or two kind of job, but he is not or she is not allowed by the law 
to work. That is where you see child labor will come to play. So the labor force are those of them that are within the age bracket of 18 to 60 years who are able, willing, and are allowed by the law to work. That will take us down to the demand for labor. When we talk about the demand for labor, we are looking at the demand for labor that does the demand for labor in order to produce goods and the services. So from the definition here, we say that the demand for labor relates to the quantity of human efforts or human efforts required or needed by entrepreneurs for carrying out production. So we are looking at the quantity of human eh, effort that an entrepreneur we need, that an, that an entrepreneur is requiring to carry out production, economic eh, production, economic process, economic activities. And this demand for labor depends on the following that we are going to list out, that we are going to mention. So the quantity of human efforts that an entrepreneur will be, need, will be needing is or your, an entrepreneur is needed to carry out production is depending on the following. One, the price of labor or the wage rate. Two, the number of industries in a country. Three, the nature of industries. Four, the quantity of other factors of production. Five, the state of employment in the country. Six, the demand for labor output in the labor output and price and price level within the economy. So these things, they a kind of factor that determines the quantity that the quantity of labor that an entrepreneur can get or an entrepreneur we need to carry out production so when you're looking at it you see, you see that the price of labor will determine the quantity that an entrepreneur will demand for to carry out production processes. If the demand, if the price is high, the entrepreneur will demand low. That's, I mean, the law of, uh, the first law of demand will also come to play as long as price is concerned, because we are also talking about demand for labor. So the price will also affect it, is a factor. So number two, the number of uh, industries. If the number of industries, if there are few, you see that the hands which the entrepreneurs we need will be few. But if we have many industries, they will need many labor. The demand for labor will increase. The nature of industries. There are some industries that they don't demand, they don't need much people depending on the settings of what they are producing. You can't see someone that is producing such as water and ask that person to employ 1,000 people to produce the such as water, depending on the nature of his industry, if, they, if that is maybe a small industry. So he will not be able to break even after paying salaries. So he will demand low. And if the nature of the industry is in a larger, it's a larger firm or a larger industry, a large industry, you will see that they will be demanding high. Another one we have there is the quantity of other factors of uh, production. The quantity of other factors of production will determine 
to an extent they demand to a greater extent they demand for labor if we have a piece of land of 100 by 100 meters and you want to demand labor that will come and clear it you will not demand much you cannot put 1000 people to come and clear a plot of land so the factor of the quantity of the factor of production will determine you want to produce bread your raw materials and other things may be the factors eh, as the factors that you put in in order to let production to take place you will not you will not allow the the, the level to be higher it will not, you must, it must correspond to what you are producing to the factors you have you will not have like i use a piece of land for example and you put many people there to work you won't get anything you get anything don't forget that the entrepreneur want to maximize profit so the quantity of other factors of production will determine the quantity of labor that will be demanded that will be demanded for now the fifth one we have there is state of uh, employment if the state of employment in the country is rigorous the process of processing employment if that's if the state is in a situation that it doesn't take much time for employment to take place it will help to increase the level of uh, the demand for labor but if it is studious it will reduce the level of demand for labor another one point we have there is if is the, the, the demand for level output and price level in the economy if the demand for level up output those things that labor is produced don't forget that labor the demand for labor is a derived demand the demand for labor is a derived demand this is because it is not required for its own sake the demand for labor is not required for labor is required for what labor can help to produce so it is a derived demand when we get to the type of demand you understand okay a type of demand is within ss1 so i believe that you've known you know your types of a uh, demand we have derived uh, demands you understand this concept of labor being a derived demand better if you have the knowledge of types of uh, demand good so here now if what labor is producing it is being demanded you will see that the entrepreneur will be forced to demand to get more labor so that he can be equal he can be able to equate demand of those commodities in the market so by supplying equating the demand with his uh, supply in the market but in a situation that the level the demand for labor output is low you can see some of the industries trying to drop their their workers that they are not meeting up to pay wages and salary is because of maybe because of the demand of their of their commodity in the market is low they will start dropping some uh, laying off some workers in order to meet up the salaries of others so if it is if the output of what labor is producing in the market is being demanded at a greater percentage that means the demand for labor will increase but if it is reduced the demand for labor will reduce we have the supply of labor we have seen the demand of labor let us also look at the supply of labor in that this is the supply of labor services or the quantity of human efforts available in a country for production purposes so before you supply eh, you must supply what is eh, available so the supply of labor we are looking at the the supply of labor services the supply of human efforts in the production process for production purposes but this is being affected by some factors 
The factors which determine the quantity of labor supplied include one, the size of the population and population growth rates. Two, age distribution of the population. Three, the official school living age. Four, the official age of entry and retirement in the labor force. Five, the number of people that pursue full-time education beyond the normal school living age. Five, the number of able-bodied persons who are not willing to work. So these things, these factors will affect the supply of labor. For example, this last one that I said that the number of able-bodied persons who are not willing to work, it will affect the supply of labor. If we have 1,000 persons in a country, for example, and out of one, these 1,000 persons okay, in the working force, in the labor force, they are, they are allowed by law to work, they are with the aid to work, they are able, and out of this 1,000, 500 refuse to work, they are not willing to work. What do you think that will happen to the supply of labor? That means what we will be able to supply for production purposes will be 500. You see, it will reduce by half. But if the number of able-bodied men that are not willing to work, if there are few, you can see that it will not be noticed eh, like that. So the number, the number will affect the supply of a eh, level. I also made mention of school living age. If the school living age is being increased to maybe there's an um, education policy that says that the school living age will now be 20 years. Whereby in the level force, we have 18 to 20 to 60 years. So those, those people that are eight, I mean, 18 years will not be able to work. Those people that are 19 years will not be able to work because they are schooling. So you see that it will reduce the number of uh, labor to be supplied in the labor market. We have other factors like I, we just mentioned here, the size of the population. If the size of the population is low, the, it will affect the labor force. The labor force will also be low because when you now remove those that are above 60 years and those that are beyond 18 years, you will see that what will be left may be small. So the, what the labor we are going to supply in the labor market will reduce, will be small. But if the population is high, we we'll have higher able-bodied men who are willing and able, who are willing to work and allowed by the law to work, the, the number will increase. So these are the factors that affect the supply of labor in the labor market. We have been able to define labor markets. We have been able to explain the demand for labor and the supply of labor. All right, judging from that, I would like to assess you with this assignment to know if the stated objectives have been achieved. In your assignment, I would like you to define labor markets, explain the demand for labor, explain any factor that affects demand for labor, explain supply of labor also, and the fifth one there in your assignment is that I want you to state any three factors that affect supply of labor. If you finish your doing your assignment, you forward your assignment to this email class at gmail.com. All of them are in small letters. Don't type it 
with capital letters. They are all in small letters. Then don't forget to write your names, your class, your subjects, and the topic which you are doing the assignment on. Thank you very much and remain safe until we meet again.